This is Reed Daly's Come Follow Me podcast. In this podcast series, lesson and scripture audio are combined for a hands-free experience. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. At the end of this podcast, you can hear our full disclosure statement or read it on readdaily.live. May 11th through 17th, Mosiah chapters 18 through 24, we have entered into a covenant with him. President Thomas S. Monson taught, quote, As we read and ponder the scriptures, we will experience the sweet whisperings of the Spirit to our souls. End quote. From We Never Walk Alone, Ensign or Liahona, November 2013. The account of Alma and his people in Mosiah chapter 18 and chapters 23 through 24 shows what it means to come into the fold of God. See Mosiah chapter 18 verse 8. And it came to pass that he said unto them, Behold, here are the waters of Mormon, for thus were they called. And now, as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens that they may be light. When they were baptized, they made a covenant with God to serve him and keep his commandments. While this was an intensely personal commitment, it also had to do with how they treated one another. Yes, the journey back to Heavenly Father is personal and individual, and no one can keep our covenants for us. But that doesn't mean we are alone. We need each other. As members of Christ's Church, we covenant to serve God by helping and serving one another along the way, bearing one another's burdens. See Mosiah chapter 18, verses 8 through 10. And it came to pass that he said unto them, Behold, here are the waters of Mormon for thus were they called. And now, as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens that they may be light, yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn, yea, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places that ye may be in, even until death that ye may be redeemed of God, and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that ye may have eternal life. Now I say unto you, If this be the desire of your hearts, what have you against being baptized in the name of the Lord, as a witness before him that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that he may pour out his Spirit more abundantly upon you, Alma's people definitely had burdens to bear, just as we all do. And one way the Lord helps us bear up our burdens with ease, see Mosiah chapter 24, verse 15. And now it came to pass that the burdens which were laid upon Alma and his brethren were made light. Yea, the Lord did strengthen them, that they could bear up their burdens with ease. And they did submit cheerfully and with patience to all the will of the Lord. Is by giving us a community of saints who have promised to mourn with us and comfort us, just as we have promised to do for them. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study Mosiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 17 Baptism includes a covenant to serve God and stand as a witness of Him. Mosiah chapter 18 verses 8 through 10 contains Alma's teachings about the baptismal covenant or the promise we make to God at baptism. As you read these verses, ponder the following questions. What do you learn from these verses about the promises you made at baptism? What does God promise you? How does the covenant to serve God, see verse 10, relate to our efforts to minister to one another, see verses 8 through 9? What are you doing to keep your promises? How does keeping your baptismal covenant help you be filled with the Spirit? See Mosiah chapter 18 verse 14. How does the Spirit help you keep your covenant? Based on actual events as recorded in the Book of Mormon, 
another testament of Jesus Christ. Here are the waters of Mormon. And now, as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens that they may be light. Yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witnesses of God at all times, and in all things, and in all places that ye may be in, even until death, that ye may be redeemed of God, and be numbered with those of the first resurrection that ye may have eternal life. Now I say unto you, if this be the desire of your hearts, what have you against being baptized as a witness that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that he may pour out his spirit more abundantly upon you? Alma. This is the desire of our hearts. Elam, I baptize thee having authority from the Almighty God as a testimony that you have entered into a covenant with him to serve him until you are dead as to the mortal body. And may the Spirit of the Lord be poured out upon you, and may he grant unto you eternal life. Through the redemption of Christ, whom he has prepared from the foundation of the world, This account also reveals the proper mode of baptism. What do you learn in verses 14 through 17 about how baptism should be performed? And after Alma had said these words, both Alma and Helam were buried in the water, and they arose and came forth out of the water rejoicing, being filled with the Spirit. And again Alma took another, and went forth a second time into the water and baptized him according to the first, only he did not bury himself again in the water. And after this manner he did baptize every one that went forth to the place of Mormon, and they were in number about two hundred and four souls. Yea, and they were baptized in the waters of Mormon, and were filled with the grace of God. And they were called the Church of God, or the Church of Christ, from that time forward. And it came to pass that whosoever was baptized by the power and authority of God was added to his church. What else do you learn about baptism from Matthew chapter 3, verse 16? And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 5. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, 
that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Third Nephi chapter 11 verses 21 through 28 And the Lord said unto him, I give unto you power that ye shall baptize this people when I am again ascended into heaven. And again the Lord called others and said unto them likewise, and he gave unto them power to baptize, and he said unto them, On this wise shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you. Verily I say unto you, that whoso repenteth of his sins through your words, and desireth to be baptized in my name, on this wise shall ye baptize them. Behold, ye shall go down and stand in the water, and in my name shall ye baptize them. And now behold, these are the words which ye shall say, calling them by name, saying, Having authority given me of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then shall ye immerse them in the water, and come forth again out of the water. And after this manner shall ye baptize in my name. For behold, verily I say unto you, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one. And I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one. And according as I have commanded you, thus shall ye baptize. And there shall be no disputations among you, as there have hitherto been. Neither shall there be disputations among you concerning the points of my doctrine, as there have hitherto been. And Doctrine and Covenants, section 20, verses 72 through 74. Baptism is to be administered in the following manner unto all those who repent. The person who is called of God and has authority from Jesus Christ to baptize shall go down into the water with the person who has presented himself or herself for baptism, and shall say, calling him or her by name, Having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then shall he immerse him or her in the water, and come forth again out of the water. See also Doctrine and Covenants, section 20, verses 37, 77, and 79. And again, by way of commandment to the church concerning the manner of baptism, all those who humble themselves before God and desire to be baptized and come forth with broken hearts and contrite spirits and witness before the church that they have truly repented of all their sins and are willing to take upon them the name of Jesus Christ, having a determination to serve Him to the end, and truly manifest by their works that they have received of the Spirit of Christ unto the remission of their sins, shall be received by baptism into His church. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, that they may have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. Mosiah chapter 18, verses 17 through 30. 
God's people should be united. As Alma and his people discovered, following Jesus Christ sometimes means leaving a familiar way of life for something new and different. But Alma's people drew strength from each other as part of the Church of Christ. See Mosiah chapter 18, verse 17. And they were called the Church of God, or the Church of Christ, from that time forward. And it came to pass that whosoever was baptized by the power and authority of God was added to his church. How do the teachings in Mosiah chapter 18, verses 17 through 30, inspire you to be a better member of the church? And they were called the Church of God, or the Church of Christ, from that time forward. And it came to pass that whosoever was baptized by the power and authority of God was added to his church. And it came to pass that Alma, having authority from God, ordained priests. Even one priest to every fifty of their number did he ordain to preach unto them, and to teach them concerning the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he commanded them that they should teach nothing save it were the things which he had taught, and which had been spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets. Yea, even he commanded them that they should preach nothing save it were repentance and faith on the Lord, who had redeemed his people. And he commanded them that there should be no contention one with another, but that they should look forward with one eye, having one faith and one baptism, having their hearts knit together in unity and in love one towards another. And thus he commanded them to preach. And thus they became the children of God. And he commanded them that they should observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And also every day they should give thanks to the Lord their God. And he also commanded them that the priests whom he had ordained should labor with their own hands for their support. And there was one day in every week that was set apart that they should gather themselves together to teach the people and to worship the Lord their God, and also, as often as it was in their power, to assemble themselves together. And the priests were not to depend upon the people for their support, but for their labor they were to receive the grace of God, that they might wax strong in the Spirit, having the knowledge of God, that they might teach with power and authority from God. And again Alma commanded that the people of the church should impart of their substance, every one according to that which he had. If he have more abundantly, he should impart more abundantly. And of him that had but little, but little should be required. And to him that had not should be given. And thus they should impart of their substance of their own free will and good desires towards God, and to those priests that stood in need, yea, and to every needy naked soul. And this he said unto them, having been commanded of God. And they did walk uprightly before God, imparting to one another both temporally and spiritually according to their needs and their wants. And now it came to pass that all this was done in Mormon, yea, by the waters of Mormon, in the forest that was near the waters of Mormon, yea, the place of Mormon, the waters of Mormon, the forest of Mormon. How beautiful are they to the eyes of them who there came to the knowledge of their Redeemer! Yea, and how blessed are they, for they shall sing to his praise for ever. What can you do to help your ward or branch members be knit together in unity and in love? See Mosiah chapter 18, verse 21. And he commanded them that there should be no contention one with another but that they should look forward with one eye, having one faith and one baptism, having their hearts knit together in unity and in love one towards another. See also Henry B. Eyring, Our Hearts Knit as One, Ensign or Leahona, November 2008. Mosiah chapters 19 through 20. The words of the prophets will be fulfilled. Abednego made some specific prophecies about what would happen to King Noah and his people if they refused to repent. However, to some, these prophecies seemed unbelievable. See Mosiah chapter 12 verses 1 through 8 and verses 14 through 15. 
especially since the Nephites had successfully defended themselves against the Lamanites for nearly fifty years. And it came to pass that after the space of two years that Abinadi came among them in disguise, that they knew him not, and began to prophesy among them, saying, Thus has the Lord commanded me, saying, Abinadi, go and prophesy unto this my people, for they have hardened their hearts against my words, they have repented not of their evil doings. Therefore I will visit them in my anger, yea, in my fierce anger will I visit them in their iniquities and abominations. Yea, woe be unto this generation. And the Lord said unto me, Stretch forth thy hand and prophesy, saying, Thus saith the Lord, It shall come to pass that this generation, because of their iniquities, shall be brought into bondage, and shall be smitten on the cheek, yea, and shall be driven by men, and shall be slain. And the vultures of the air, and the dogs, yea, and the wild beasts, shall devour their flesh. And it shall come to pass that the life of King Noah shall be valued even as a garment in a hot furnace, for he shall know that I am the Lord. And it shall come to pass that I will smite this my people with sore afflictions, yea, with famine and with pestilence, and I will cause that they shall howl all the day long, yea, and I will cause that they shall have burdens lashed upon their backs and they shall be driven before like a dumb ass. And it shall come to pass that I will send forth hail among them, and it shall smite them, and they shall also be smitten with the east wind, and insects shall pester their land also, and devour their grain, and they shall be smitten with a great pestilence. And all this will I do because of their iniquities and abominations. And it shall come to pass that except they repent, I will utterly destroy them from off the face of the earth. Yet they shall leave a record behind them, and I will preserve them for other nations which shall possess the land. Yea, even this will I do that I may discover the abominations of this people to other nations. And many things did Abinadi prophesy against this people. But the words of the prophets will all be fulfilled, in our day as much as in Abinadi's. What do you find in Mosiah chapters 19 through 20 that would lead Gideon to declare that Abinadi's prophecies had been fulfilled? And it came to pass that the army of the king returned, having searched in vain for the people of the Lord. And now behold, the forces of the king were small, having been reduced, and there began to be a division among the remainder of the people. And the lesser part began to breathe out threatenings against the king and there began to be a great contention among them. And now there was a man among them whose name was Gideon, and he being a strong man and an enemy to the king. Therefore he drew his sword and swore in his wrath that he would slay the king. And it came to pass that he fought with the king, and when the king saw that he was about to overpower him, he fled and ran and got upon the tower which was near the temple. And Gideon pursued after him, and was about to get upon the tower to slay the king. And the king cast his eyes round about towards the land of Shemlon, and behold, the army of the Lamanites were within the borders of the land. And now the king cried out in the anguish of his soul, saying, Gideon, spare me, for the Lamanites are upon us, and they will destroy us, yea, they will destroy my people. And now the king was not so much concerned about his people as he was about his own life. Nevertheless, Gideon did spare his life. And the king commanded the people that they should flee before the Lamanites. And he himself did go before them, and they did flee into the wilderness with their women and their children. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did pursue them and did overtake them and began to slay them. Now it came to pass, that the king commanded them that all the men should leave their wives and their children and flee before the Lamanites. Now there were many that would not leave them, but had rather stay and perish with them, and the rest left their wives and their children and fled. 
And it came to pass that those who tarried with their wives and their children caused that their fair daughters should stand forth and plead with the Lamanites that they would not slay them. And it came to pass that the Lamanites had compassion on them, for they were charmed with the beauty of their women. Therefore the Lamanites did spare their lives, and took them captives, and carried them back to the land of Nephi, and granted unto them that they might possess the land, under the conditions that they would deliver up King Noah into the hands of the Lamanites, and deliver up their property, even one half of all they possessed, one half of their gold, and their silver, and all their precious things. And thus they should pay tribute to the king of the Lamanites from year to year. And now there was one of the sons of the king among those that were taken captive, whose name was Limhi. And now Limhi was desirous that his father should not be destroyed. Nevertheless, Limhi was not ignorant of the iniquities of his father, he himself being a just man. And it came to pass that Gideon sent men into the wilderness secretly to search for the king and those that were with him. And it came to pass that they met the people in the wilderness, all save the king and his priests. Now they had sworn in their hearts that they would return to the land of Nephi, and if their wives and their children were slain, and also those that had tarried with them, that they would seek revenge, and also perish with them. And the king commanded them that they should not return, and they were angry with the king, and caused that he should suffer even unto death by fire. And they were about to take the priests also and put them to death, and they fled before them. And it came to pass that they were about to return to the land of Nephi, and they met the men of Gideon. And the men of Gideon told them of all that had happened to their wives and their children, and that the Lamanites had granted unto them that they might possess the land by paying a tribute to the Lamanites of one half of all they possessed. And the people told the men of Gideon that they had slain the king, and his priests had fled from them farther into the wilderness. And it came to pass that after they had ended the ceremony, that they returned to the land of Nephi rejoicing, because their wives and their children were not slain. And they told Gideon what they had done to the king. And it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites made an oath unto them that his people should not slay them. And also Limhi, being the son of the king, having the kingdom conferred upon him by the people, made oath unto the king of the Lamanites that his people should pay tribute unto him, even one half of all they possessed. And it came to pass that Limhi began to establish the kingdom and to establish peace among his people. And the king of the Lamanites set guards round about the land, that he might keep the people of Limhi in the land, that they might not depart into the wilderness. And he did support his guards out of the tribute which he did receive from the Nephites. And now king Limhi did have continual peace in his kingdom for the space of two years that the Lamanites did not molest them nor seek to destroy them. Now there was a place in Shemlon where the daughters of the Lamanites did gather themselves together to sing and to dance and to make themselves merry. And it came to pass that there was one day a small number of them gathered together to sing and to dance. And now the priests of King Noah, being ashamed to return to the city of Nephi, Yea, and also fearing that the people would slay them, therefore they durst not return to their wives and their children. And having tarried in the wilderness, and having discovered the daughters of the Lamanites, they laid and watched them. And when there were but few of them gathered together to dance, they came forth out of their secret places, and took them, and carried them into the wilderness. Yea, twenty and four of the daughters of the Lamanites they carried into the wilderness. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that their daughters had been missing, they were angry with the people of Limhi, for they thought it was the people of Limhi. Therefore they sent their armies forth, yea, even the king himself went before his people. And they went up to the land of Nephi to destroy the people of Limhi. 
And now Limhi had discovered them from the tower. Even all their preparations for war did he discover. Therefore he gathered his people together and laid wait for them in the fields and in the forests. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had come up, that the people of Limhi began to fall upon them from their waiting places and began to slay them. And it came to pass that the battle became exceedingly sore, for they fought like lions for their prey. And it came to pass that the people of Limhi began to drive the Lamanites before them, yet they were not half so numerous as the Lamanites. But they fought for their lives and for their wives and for their children. Therefore they exerted themselves and like dragons did they fight. And it came to pass that they found the king of the Lamanites among the number of their dead. Yet he was not dead, having been wounded and left upon the ground, so speedy was the flight of his people. And they took him and bound up his wounds, and brought him before Limhi, and said, Behold, here is the king of the Lamanites. He, having received a wound, has fallen among their dead, and they have left him, and behold, we have brought him before you. And now, let us slay him. But Limhi said unto them, Ye shall not slay him, but bring him hither that I may see him. And they brought him, and Limhi said unto him, What cause have ye to come up to war against my people? Behold, my people have not broken the oath that I made unto you. Therefore why should ye break the oath which ye made unto my people? And now the king said, I have broken the oath because thy people did carry away the daughters of my people. Therefore in my anger I did cause my people to come up to war against thy people. And now Limhi had heard nothing concerning this matter. Therefore he said, I will search among my people, and whosoever has done this thing shall perish. Therefore he caused a search to be made among his people. Now when Gideon had heard these things, he being the king's captain, he went forth and said unto the king, I pray thee forbear, and do not search this people, and lay not this thing to their charge. For do ye not remember the priests of thy father, whom this people sought to destroy? And are they not in the wilderness? And are not they the ones who have stolen the daughters of the Lamanites? And now behold, and tell the king of these things, that he may tell his people that they may be pacified towards us. For behold, they are already preparing to come against us. And behold, also there are but few of us. And behold, they come with their numerous hosts, and except the king doth pacify them towards us, we must perish. For are not the words of Abinadi fulfilled which he prophesied against us? And all this because we would not hearken unto the words of the Lord, and turn from our iniquities? And now let us pacify the king, and we fulfill the oath which we have made unto him. For it is better that we should be in bondage than that we should lose our lives. Therefore, let us put a stop to the shedding of so much blood. And now Limhi told the king all the things concerning his father and the priests that had fled into the wilderness and attributed the carrying away of their daughters to them. And it came to pass that the king was pacified towards his people. And he said unto them, let us go forth to meet my people without arms, and I swear unto you with an oath that my people shall not slay thy people. And it came to pass that they followed the king and went forth without arms to meet the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did meet the Lamanites, and the king of the Lamanites did bow himself down before them and did plead in behalf of the people of Limhi. And when the Lamanites saw the people of Limhi that they were without arms, they had compassion on them and were pacified towards them and returned with their king in peace to their own land. See Mosiah chapter 20 verse 21. How does this account strengthen your faith in the warnings and counsel of God's prophets and your commitments to follow their words? When have you seen a prophet's words fulfilled in our day?
Mosiah chapters 21 through 24. God can make my burdens light. Limhi's people and Alma's people both fell into bondage, although for different reasons and in different circumstances. What can you learn by comparing the accounts of Limhi's people in Mosiah chapters 19 through 22 and Alma's people in Mosiah chapter 18 and chapters 23 and 24? You could note how each of these groups responded to captivity or how each was eventually delivered. As you do, look for messages that apply to your life. For example, what do you learn from these accounts that will help you carry your burdens? Mosiah chapter 23, verses 21 through 24, and chapter 24, verses 8 through 17. I can trust the Lord. Even though they had repented of their sins, Alma and his people still found themselves in bondage. Their experience shows that trusting the Lord and living our covenants doesn't always prevent difficulties, but it does help us overcome them. As you read Mosiah chapter 23, verses 21 through 24, and chapter 24, verses 18 through 17, note words and phrases that can help you learn to trust in God, regardless of your circumstances. Nevertheless, the Lord seeth fit to chasten his people. Yea, he trieth their patience and their faith. Nevertheless, whosoever putteth his trust in him, the same shall be lifted up at the last day. Yea, and thus it was with this people. For behold, I will show unto you that they were brought into bondage, and none could deliver them but the Lord their God, yea, even the God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob. And it came to pass that he did deliver them, and he did show forth his mighty power unto them, and great were their rejoicings. And now it came to pass that Amulon began to exercise authority over Alma and his brethren and began to persecute him, and caused that his children should persecute their children. For Amulon knew Alma, that he had been one of the king's priests, and that it was he that believed the words of Abinadi, and was driven out before the king, and therefore he was wroth with him. For he was subject to King Laman, yet he exercised authority over them, and put tasks upon them, and put taskmasters over them. And it came to pass that so great were their afflictions that they began to cry mightily to God. And Amulon commanded them that they should stop their cries, and he put guards over them to watch them, that whosoever should be found calling upon God should be put to death. And Alma and his people did not raise their voices to the Lord their God, but did pour out their hearts to him, and he did know the thoughts of their hearts. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord came to them in their afflictions, saying, Lift up your heads and be of good comfort, for I know of the covenant which ye have made unto me, and I will covenant with my people and deliver them out of bondage. And I will also ease the burdens which are put upon your shoulders, that even you cannot feel them upon your backs, even while you are in bondage. And this will I do that ye may stand as witnesses for me hereafter, and that ye may know of a surety that I, the Lord God, do visit my people in their afflictions. And now it came to pass that the burdens which were laid upon Alma and his brethren were made light. Yea, the Lord did strengthen them, that they could bear up their burdens with ease. And they did submit cheerfully and with patience to all the will of the Lord. And it came to pass that so great was their faith and their patience, that the voice of the Lord came unto them again, saying, Be of good comfort, for on the morrow I will deliver you out of bondage. And he said unto Alma, Thou shalt go before this people, and I will go with thee, and deliver this people out of bondage. See also Thomas S. Monson, I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Ensign or Leahona, November 2013. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Family Home Evening As you read the scriptures with your family, the Spirit can help you know what principles to emphasize and discuss in order to meet the needs of your family. Here are some ideas. Mosiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. There is a saying that you can count the seeds in an apple, 
but you can't count the apples that come from one seed. Only one person was receptive to Abinadi's testimony, but that one person, Alma, influenced generations of Nephites. Perhaps you could use a fruit with seeds to demonstrate this principle. How does this message apply to our family? What can we do to share our testimonies with others? Mosiah chapter 18 verses 8 through 10 What can we learn about our baptismal covenant from these verses? See also Doctrine and Covenants section 20 verse 73 and verses 77 through 79. What are we doing to prepare for or keep our baptismal covenant? Mosiah chapter 18 verse 30 What places have special meaning to us because of the spiritual experiences we had there? Mosiah chapter 21 verses 11 through 16 and chapter 24 verses 10 through 15. What do we learn by comparing the captivity of Alma's people and Limhi's people? Mosiah chapter 21 verse 15 and chapter 24 verses 11 through 15. What do these verses teach us about some of the ways the Lord answers prayers? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Improving Personal Study Find a time that works for you. It is often easiest to learn when you can study the scriptures without being interrupted. Find a time that works for you and do your best to consistently study at that time each day. Thank you for listening to Read Daily's Come Follow Me podcast. Please share this podcast with family members and friends who can find us on readdaily.live or their favorite podcast application. The Intellectual Property Department of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. Along with granting permission, they ask that we make the following statement. Any products offered by readdaily.live are neither made, provided, approved, nor endorsed by Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any content or opinions expressed, implied, or included with any goods or services offered by ReadDaily.Live are solely those of Howard Patrick Holman and not those of Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thank you.